I think one uh, very important thing when it comes to, to remote teams is that uh, you're not always building dashboards for uh, for external users. You're sometimes also building dashboards for your own teams to work in. And uh, like Olga said, when you're in the office and you're next to someone, uh, it's very easy to just push them uh, in the right direction of how to use it. Uh, but if you don't have this direct contact with with your uh, users, you end up having a, a good solution for this is to put a bit of extra work into your dashboards and actually make them speak by uh, speak for themselves. Uh, especially when there's alternative dashboards, uh, users typically have a choice and they will usually go for the one that feels better. Um, so small background uh, from me, I used to work uh, as a web developer. So I used to do pages, I used to do applications, and eventually uh, in the last couple of years, I landed in R and in Shiny. So one of the great things that um, I ended up learning about Shiny is that deep down, there's a lot of JavaScript, a lot of CSS, a lot of HTML involved. So this actually allows you to, uh, allowed me to reuse a lot of what I used as a web developer to actually work on Shiny dashboards. Uh, so, why does UI actually matter? Uh, the The question is, if you have a dashboard that works, why should you actually care about making it look nicer? And the truth is that uh, UI, uh, the, the way your dashboard looks and feels is very important for your users. So, uh, this is the, the, the first experience that your users are going to get uh, using your application. And uh, especially now that everyone is so used to the way the internet works, the way the, the um, uh, applications in the phone, in your phones and uh, tablets work, uh, users expect things to behave in a specific way. Um, it's also very important to notice that users don't usually care uh, what's in the background. And this is valid even for some shiny apps. If, if your users use the application to uh, get a specific insight or to get some some data they don't really want to they, they don't really need to know how complicated the background process is uh, they want to have a nice experience to, they want to be uh, quick and efficient uh, at using it and in general you end up uh, with with this uh, this concept that if users don't feel engaged and comfortable when they use your application, uh, they might get frustrated, they might stop using it, maybe they will pick a different alternative if it's possible. Uh, so instead of going over the whole UI and what you can do, uh, I decided to give you a couple of things that you can look uh, at, a couple of uh, parts of the application that you can uh, Keep in mind either when you're using an application or you're giving feedback on when, or when you're actually building the application. Uh, so I picked six very important topics, uh, very, very important points when it comes to UI. Uh, the first one is you should keep your interface simple. It means uh, any element that isn't actually doing anything, uh, you should probably remove it. Uh, it also means Cleaning up your dashboards also means that uh, you'll pass a very clear message of what you're trying your users to, of what you want your users to achieve. Uh, you end up with something that is very straight to the point uh, because all the elements there actually serve some functionality. Uh, another uh, important tip is to be consistent. So if you have a text input, reuse it. If you have a button, reuse it. Uh, users kind of learn to navigate your your application. So they expect elements to have the same kind of behavior. They expect flows to uh, work the same way. Uh, and you, ki you can kind of define patterns of how your application flows when you have very complex applications. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is to be Purposefully, uh, purposeful in your layout. And this basically means that just because all the information is there doesn't mean that it's being shown in a, in a, in a good way. So adding white space where there's no information is important. Uh, using, using the UI elements to actually create some kind of structure. And in the case of dashboards, this is 
uh, the sidebar, uh, the sidebar navigation, the, the top navigation, all of these can help you create a bit of structure when it comes to your dashboard. Uh, it also means that you can draw attention to important information. Uh, you can you can use colors, you can use uh, the size of the elements to actually change the way that your users perceive parts of it. Uh, other one is you. There's a few really good things that you can uh, manipulate when it comes to to any kind of uh, web application. And these are color, texture, and typography. So work work with these. Uh, don't overdo it when it comes to color, when it comes to contracts, when it comes to shadows. Uh, use them to kind of attract your users to specific points of the application or to make things less less evident and less important from 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 your application uh, remember that different fonts send different messages so uh, bold large fonts uh, are a different message from small uh, very non-bright fonts for example uh, and also remember that the size of the font, the, the way the text is arranged, uh, it really helps people go through your application and be more efficient at their work. Uh, also, remember to provide feedback. Uh, you want your users to always know where they are, uh, what they're doing, uh, if the application is still doing something or not. Uh, using messages, progress bars, uh, anything that gives some kind of feedback feedback of what's happening uh, really helps reducing the frustration, especially when you have scripts that are running for very long times or you're uploading a lot of data. Uh, you don't want your user to think that the app just crashed or that something is wrong. Uh, keep them Uh, uh looks like we might have lost audio for a second. Let's see. Pedro, are, are you able to hear us? Looks like we might have lost your audio. Hmm. Let's same. see. Uh, I'm not quite. Oh, Pedro, are you back? Yes, I'm okay. sorry. There we go. Yeah, we lost your audio for a minute. Oh, uh, do you want me to go back for a second or? Uh, yeah, I, we missed the past the like two minutes of what you were saying. Oh, okay. Uh, so let's from maybe uh, Windows go... Server. Window from where? Sorry. Yeah, this okay. slide. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, so I was saying that uh, it's also very important to provide feedback to your users. Um, this is, uh, you don't want your users to know uh, that your app, uh, you, you want you want users to, to be uh, aware of what's happening with the app. This, this usually means uh, using progress bars, uh, using messages, using notifications. Uh, you should always provide some kind of feedback to make sure that uh, your users don't get lost or are waiting for some very long process, some very long script that's running, and they have no idea what's happening. Uh, if if you have something that you know is going to take more than a few seconds, uh, add, uh, add a progress bar. If you have something that can be done in the background while your user is using the, the, the application, uh, make a pop, uh, maybe show a notification when, when, uh, when it's over. Uh, all of this kind of constant feedback really helps when it comes to the to the user experience. Uh, and finally, uh, remember to think about the default values. Uh, shiny dashboards live of uh, inputs of user user uh, inputs, and a lot of the times these inputs can be defaulted to some values that are very common for users to use. Uh, if you have a drop down, but you know that most commonly this is the value that's used, uh, add a value to that drop down or pre-select the drop down. If you have a checkbox that most of the time is selected, uh, select it by default. Anything that avoids unnecessary actions by the user and can 
make the experience much faster and much smoother. Uh, so how do you actually achieve all of these things? So uh, there's two ways of, of going at it. Uh, the, the, the easy and quick way is uh, use UI packages. So we're all familiar with Shiny and its, it's default UI, but you, you can, for example, use Shiny dashboard to completely change the way the application looks. And some of these UI tips are already implemented in the, the actual elements provided by Shiny dashboard. Uh, another good package is Shiny Semantic. Uh, this is based on a different uh, CSS framework but it also comes with uh, a lot of elements that you don't really need to think about some of these uh, of these uh, tips, uh, but you already have some elements that already include them. Uh, another option is that you can just create your own um, your your own layout, your own uh, styles, and I I am giving you here three very uh, common examples that I use. So. Uh, maybe you found some some uh, HTML template online that you would like to use. Uh, use HTML template. This is a function that just lets you uh, import uh, a full HTML uh, file to, to your Shiny application. Uh, do you want to style something? Uh, use CSS. If you if you have a lot of styles and want to go very deep into the into changes, uh, you can even try SAS, which is basically a preprocessor for CSS. It's uh, CSS for developers, let's say. Uh, do you want to add custom behavior that isn't default out of the box? Uh, if you're building something very complex, you can try HTML widgets, but for very simple behaviors, you can even use uh, just vanilla JavaScript with, with a couple of, uh, uh, of actions. Uh, and uh, these are some examples of very popular uh, packages that were done using HTML widgets, for example. So you can see that these are uh, standards for for what we currently use as developers and there's they are very they are actually very easy to use uh, so I'll just quickly finish with a couple of examples of what you can actually do so uh, this is an example of uh, just a dashboard that started as a simple shiny dashboard uh, we then implemented we then added shiny semantic a bit of custom styling and we got a completely different different feel for for the actual dashboard uh, another example, and there's a link in the bottom. Uh, I actually did a couple of months ago the whole idea of going from uh, just a base shiny um, dashboard into a fully, fully uh, complete custom solution. So the dashboard started like this. Uh, I did, did some testing with shiny dashboard where the feeling was completely different with just a few changes. Uh, semantic dashboard also completely different. Uh, feeling and then we ended up with a super with a completely custom built solution uh, with a lot of CSS, a lot of uh, custom JavaScript, and uh, even a team switcher. So uh, you could, you, in general, the, the the limit is your imagination. And uh, just as a final a final example, this was my entry for this year's Shiny contest. Uh, there's a blog uh, link in the bottom that you can follow if you want to read a bit more about uh, all the technologies, everything that actually went into do this. This is actually, this is a shiny dashboard. I promise you, uh, if you don't believe me, uh, you can check the GitHub repo. Uh, yeah, and that's it from me. And I will be passing it to Damian, which will be, who will be talking about scaling and just how much can you push when it comes to scaling uh, shiny applications.